Hello everyone, Mr. Albert Ronan here again. Today I'm here for my breakdown on shoot style. Izuku Midoriya shoot style, as it says at the top. Um, shoot style Deku, I would definitely say, is the most balanced of all three Dekus. He's the most balanced, and thus I find the most fun playing, because you don't feel like crap for playing him. You don't feel like you're cheesing people out. He's also probably the, um, the best brawler character. He's the most up close and he has really good pressure and moves and his only projectile moves is this kind of bad rock projectile where he kicks a rock at you it doesn't go very far like it is in, in like attack range like I can attack further than that goes but yeah he has this sort of as a projectile but that's all he has projectile wise anyways let's get into his buttons so his regular attack string is this three hitting attack string that leaves him in an air state so if you press a button it's gonna do the air version of the button. So if I do his armor attack afterwards, you'll see he'll do his air armor attack. And his ground armor attack is this one, and this is his air armor attack. So you saw that he did his air armor attack after the third hit. In the air, his attack string is a three hitting attack string. The third hit just launches the opponent away. I don't think it gets wall splat. Oops. But I could be wrong, but I, he, he is way better at Wolf Battle. So basically, never do the third hit, it's just used to extend combos, obviously. And I already showed you his yellow attacks. He can combo into both of them and out of them with the quirk buttons. So I can do two hits into the armor attack into a different quirk button. And same with the air version. And for his ground version, it leaves him in a long fumble state, so you can actually go and attack again if you dash cancel, and that's a true combo. So this is on recovery, and then still hit. Okay, his red attack is a really good red attack. It's pretty fast. Unfortunately, he puts the red animation on himself quite early, so people can tell that the red attack's happening. A lot of a lot of characters, they start off the, red, the attack, and then it goes red. But Deku is red for the whole time, so sometimes people are going to easily react to it. But obviously it's good, you know, if you're doing your mix-up support stuff. Doing the unblockable setups and things. And it has decent range. It's not the best. It used to be better in One's Justice 1. You know, it gets the job done, and luckily you can at least combo up with it. Uh, very easily. Okay, now getting to his quirk buttons. His quirk 1 is the same in the air and the ground. It's this two hitting uh, combo ender, like that's its main function. Absolutely, it leaves them in a long splat. So, say if I've done a long combo in the air, I'll end in quirk 1. It'll bring us both back to the ground. I have a lot of time to do whatever I want. Whether maybe I want to run away to make some distance or something. Like if I'm against a character that really scares me up close, like Rafa, and I want to you know, maybe try and use some projectiles or something, or just get some space to use my supports. There's a lot of time on Wake Up before they can actually recover, and so I can get like quite a distance, do whatever, set up a support before he can recover. See, not how he missed, he was on the ground for so long. So yeah, and it does a lot of damage as a combo ender, as you can see there, 4,400 damage just on its own. So yeah, that's its main function, it's a combo ender, you can cancel it after his tilt quirk 2 in the air, and that's how you're going to be ending most of your combos. So do two attacks, to armor attack, to tilt quirk 2, into this quirk 1, and then you've gotten really big damage. Um, his tilt quirk 1 can only be done on the ground, and it was this projectile that I was showing earlier. Um, you know, it, it gets the job done as a projectile, it gives him something to just cope with without going in and attacking and risking being punished for it if they sidestep. So he just throws out a projectile, it's safe if, um, if it's blocked from a distance, but from up close it's very unsafe. But from over here, there's no way he's gonna punish it. So yeah, it's it's a pretty average projectile. It does really good damage um, from up close, as you see from a normal distance it does 2,500, which is fine. But from here it does about 4,000 and leaves him in a flying state, because there's two hits that hit, so I guess the kick is involved. And you can use that to do some interesting combos if you want, change it up. Which I think it would do more damage if I did the one hit, because then yeah, both hits hit. 
You know, change up your combos, put this in. It also does a lot of um, block pressure, this move, from up close, as you saw here. That is clever. Let me completely break his health off. So he's on full. It's almost gone. Like, it's a, it was at like 70%, 80% gone, just because I did two hits into the projectile. So it's really good for his guard pressure that I was talking about earlier. He has crazy, crazy guard pressure, which we'll get into later. Um, yeah, now for his... Yeah, and you can't do his tilt quirk one in the air, just reminding you. So his quirk two is this three-hitting string. You hit the button three times, or else you'll just get one or two. But yeah, you press it three times, and you get this combo ending string. It's quite similar to um, Mirio's quirk two string. It's just three hits. It's a good combo ender as well. It sends the opponent flying really far. It's a lot better than Mirio's at getting wall splats. I think I can even get a wall splat if I do it from here. It just gets sent flying super far. And as you can see, it has really good angle for wall splats. It actually brings the opponent into the air and then kicks them upwards a bit. So no matter where you are, see we're on the ground. And I can just do this from wherever and I'm gonna get a wall splat. Obviously it's gonna be a lot easier if I'm in the air as well. So a really good wall splat move, if you ever see your face in the wall, make sure you're finishing your combos. Um, you can dash cancel the second hit, or well, and the third hit, but unless you're beside a corner, it can be hard to get something off of it. So like, if I'm doing a combo here, I can dash cancel after the third hit, because I can see that I'm close to the wall, and he'll bounce off and I'll be able to get a combo off of it. But usually if you're going to extend your combos, you will do um, two hits into armor attack, to tilt quark 2, into two of the quark 2 strings, and then dash cancel after that, and then do almost the same thing again, and then do quark 1. Okay, and the move is the same in the air and as it is on the ground. It's very minus on block, like there's no way of making it safe unless you cancel into something else. Whoa, what was that? You can add it into his block pressure, you see there, that took a lot of his guard. So yeah, shoot style Deku is really good at the block games. So I can... And that breaks his guard instantly. Obviously there's gaps, but I'll explain how to make it better in the future. Uh, in next, soon in the video. Uh, yeah, so his tilt quirk 2 is this slide. It does a lot of hits, a lot of damage, and it travels a pretty decent distance, not that far, but I don't know, it can be a good way of advancing. It can go under some projectiles, which is good. Not Bakugos, obviously, since it goes along the ground, but some of the ones that are thrown through the air and are like high projectiles, like some of Night Eyes, that you can slide under. It's not uh, that good at it, but you know, if you know it'll work, then try it. Uh, yeah, so it's good for getting in under some projectiles. Um, it doesn't connect after much of his combo string, like they can recover if you do it after the second hit. The only way you can get it to connect is after the first hit. And it does good damage, and you can also cancel it into any of his quirk buttons in the air. So you can extend combos that way for free. Get some weird small damage. And obviously, it can't be connected after the third hit because it's a different move because he's in the air there. So, in, in the air, it's this just like uppercut kick. It can be cancelled into other quirk buttons, so it's purely just a combo extender. It just adds little bits of extra damage. So, you'll do two hits into the armor attack, into the tilt quirk two, and then into whatever after that. So, it just adds some damage to your air combos, that version. Um, on the ground, the tilt quirk two can be. If you dash cancel after the the first kind of like uppercut kick he does, you can use it to extend combos similar to his armor attack. And that'll do 9,800 damage for the one dash cancel in the combo. And that's very similar to how he can dash cancel after this, because they're in a long fumble state. Okay. Now that we have finished all of his buttons, we can really get into his combos. So, a if you have no meter and don't want to use supports in your combos with Deku, you can do three hits into armor move, into tilt quark two, into quark one, 
and that's going to get you pretty decent damage for no dash cancels, and it's pretty easy as well, and it's quite an alarming amount of hits. For if you realize you want to spend meter partway through the combo, you can do that obviously after the, this, and then you do two hits of his. Oops, that didn't hit. After his quirk two, you do two hits of the quirk two, and then dash cancel, and then do essentially the same thing again, but from the air. And then you get 9,300 damage, which isn't max dam ma damage for one dash cancel, but if you're mid-combo and then you realize, oh, I want to spend a dash cancel, then you can do it that way, and you get some more damage, which is good. Okay, so now Deku has kind of two bread and butter combos that you can do using one dash cancel, and I showed them off before. You can either be two hits into the armor attack, then walk a little bit, and then three hits into the armor attack, and then go into the same air situation that you were doing before, that gets 9600, or you can do one hit into this, oopsie, and then do basically the same thing, but just starting with the tilt part 2, and that gets a bit more damage, 9800. Um, I tend to, if I am doing it, I tend to use this one a bit more, even though it's a bit less damage, just because it's a bit easier to hit confirm, because his tilt quirk 2 is really unsafe on block, and unless I'm doing a punish that I know I can punish them with or something, um, I'm not going to go for this that often if I if there's a, even a small chance that they'll block, because if I do this on block, I'm going to get punished for it. So if I know that they've done something unsafe, I'll go in for this one to get the max damage. But a lot of the time, if I'm just going into attack, I'll do two hits into the armor move, and then start this. And it's a bit less damage, but yeah. Okay, um, now, shoot style Deku, he has some ways of, if the opponent recovers, which a lot of people do online, like most opponents you fight against are going to be mashing the recovery button. So. Uh, um, if you realize your opponent's doing recoveries, like, a lot, you can do two hits. Um, so once you've, like, gotten to the end of your combo, just end in your Quark 2 string, and then just dash after them, and then, like, when they recover and try to do something in the air, or try and, like, land after recovering for some reason. Um, just... Oh, that's gonna be a little splat. Oh no. And you have to do a jump, or else he has, to, or else he'll land on the ground before he dash cancels. So, yeah, it's just a um, neat way of ending your combos, getting some extended damage. He's not recovering very much, but oh no, I don't want to be at the wall. And then you could, especially if you're near a wall. This has been really good demonstrations here, thanks Mr. Oldbrunen. But yeah, a lot of the time you can catch people because they try and jump in the air and then dash towards you or do something. And so if you end your combos in this, even if you're not facing a wall, a lot of the time you can get a reset and go in for your whole air combo again and then get easy changing your, your um, 1700 damage to... Um, wait, what am I saying? <laughs> You're 9,900 damage into like an easy 15,000. Okay. Um. So yeah, combo wise, in, in the air, you start in a similar way. You can put dash cancels in wherever you want, but you're essentially always going to be doing something like this. And obviously all of his combos are going to do a bit more damage than what I'm showing here, because if you have the opportunity you can end at whatever it is early into his Quark 2 string in order to get an easy wall splat. And I messed that up, because you're going to get like 10,000 or something damage. I don't know what I'm doing, that was messed up. You see, you can get good damage with the wall splat, and you're often going to be able to get a wall splat because of his great quirk 2 string. Wall splats every time. 
Um, he can get a little bit more extended damage if you want to do two dash cancels. For example, if I go a hit into this. Oops, my bad. Oh my god. Um, oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. What? How did I mess up? And here he's gonna get a bit more than 10,000, 11,000 damage for two dash cancels, which is pretty good. That's about average, above average damage. And yeah, so Shoot Style Deku, he's not a combo monster, but he has. He's always able to go into almost the same combos, like from whatever situation. So you can always be able to, you should always be able to confirm into a, a decent amount of damage from whatever kind of touch, in whatever situation. Um, I'll get into guard pressure with him in this part of the video as well because it's really important to him. So there is a gap in between the third hit of his attack string. It's, I mean, I, I didn't even have to show it off. You can see that the opponent can attack or sidestep or do anything so after the second hit. They can try and dash out of the way. Back. But, it is surprisingly good at... Where is the sidestep button? Sorry. A dodge. Actually, not to guard him. And if I get the set first hit to miss... Oh my goodness. It has really good tracking, as you just saw there. Your opponent, if they try to sidestep this, you see, he's gonna track them and catch them, and you can, then you can go in for your full combo and do all that stuff all over again because you've managed... you tricked them into sidestepping, because a lot of people are mashing the sidestep button whenever you're doing a combo or anything, because that's just how this game works. Sidesteps are really good. But Deku can catch them with the third hit of his attack string, and obviously, when the third hit hits, he can go in for his combos and, and all that stuff. Like his combos with the completely neutralist, or. and do a bunch of damage super easily just because the opponent decided to sidestep. Okay, so. Once you've gotten your opponent to respect the three hits of your attack string, you can cancel that into your armor move in the air, and then that is guaranteed, practically guaranteed as well. And then after the air attack string, there are some places where you can dash out of the way, but a lot of people don't exploit them. Like in between the second and last hit, I think you can um, dash backwards, but no one does that. <laughs> And if they do, so yeah. So if they do sit, have the whole thing, cancel it into your tilt quirk 2 in the air, and then into your quirk 2 string, and then their guard is 100% going to be broken, and make sure you're paying attention so that you can get the full combo after it. So if I go like this, into the armor move, and then I could have dash cancelled and then gone in for full combos and stuff, just because he decided to block. Now if he wants to back dash after the second hit of the armor move, I'll just cancel it early. And then do it that way. So he's actually probably one of the most scary characters on block because there's just so many things he can do. Like even if... And so... Um, I'll just mention the gap here. It, the only way it can be exploited is by attacking. So the opponent has to attack after the first hits of your attack. Then obviously that leaves them open for if I do two hits into my armor move. So I'll do two hits into my armor move, into like any other crazy stuff, like the stuff I was showing before, into tilt quirk 2, into the string, I can do two hits into the armor move, tilt quirk 2, dash, dash, dash cancel, and do the whole thing all over again, and it's so crazy and ridiculous, like even if you mess up and I'm like for some reason you get this early, dash cancel, and if you put in random dash cancels at weird places, they're not going to know where to block. And there's just no way that they can, like, avoid it. He's really scary on block, guys. Like, if anyone decides to block you, that, that's their death sentence. Like, he doesn't even have to use dash cancels. Like there, that was a clean guard break. And because of the stun from the guard break, I can go in for a full combo. Get easy damage. 
but yeah, really scary on block. And yeah, if they try to interrupt you, um, uh, instead of doing the yellow attack here, you can actually go in for the projectile. And if they've been, if they've blocked anything of yours, or if they've maybe done a sidestep into a block, so they lose that like chunk of meter. You can see, um, I'm Deku. When I sidestep, I lose some of my guard meter. Wait, let me get rid of his. Uh, so yeah, if he's lost a bit, this projectile does so much guard pressure, they're instantly guard broken. And because it's just one attack, then you can get an easy follow-up afterwards. So I'll just do an attack to emulate. So see, it looks like he's done a, um, a sidestep now. So if I do two hits into this, guard break. Easy combo afterwards, just because they did a sidestep into a block. This is guaranteed, there's no block or attack gap in this. And then, yeah, so you can either do two attacks into armor move into their follow ups, um, three attacks into the armor move, which if they sidestep, it'll catch them. Or you can do two attacks into the projectile, which will attack, which will counter if they try to attack or sidestep. So he's really strong mix up some block, and if you're playing shoot style deck, you should be breaking their block every time if they ever are willing to block it. So even though he has kind of the low average damage, he makes up for it for the fact that he's really oppressive on block and everything. Um, I'll just quickly go over his um, plus ultra. It's not that easy to combo into since his attacks leave him into the. Uh, in the air a lot of the time, so usually you just do two hits or one hit into the tilt work too. Um, it does good damage on its own, just those two hits, but if you want you can combo out of it with supports. The supports that I like to use, the cannon ones, um, aren't really the best at extending. Mirio can do some stuff. He does like the teleport upwards and bounce them, but you don't really get that much afterwards. But a lot of the time, unless like obviously I'll use the plus ultra one if I just want to get a huge chunk of damage or like finish out the game. But a lot of the time with Deku I actually like to save my meter since he can get all these good combos like super easily and like flashy stuff that wasn't a good combo at all. But like you know with this thing because this is totally free and he gets mix ups like if they recover I finish in the quad 2 string. A lot of the time I just try to save my meter and go for other damaging ways of doing things so that especially with this cannon team I can either do my plus ultra 2 or just off of any touch, if I see the opponent does anything, I touch them twice. Like, I can do anything into this if I do one hit or two hits. Into this, it's an instant 24,000 damage. So if you've touched your opponent even slightly previously in the game, if you've hit them with a projectile or hit them with like the slightest, tiniest combo from a guard break, if you touch them once more and you have the Team Plus Ultra, you're getting an instant 24,000 damage. And it can't be broken, so it's practically GG if someone hits you. So look at that. So the amount of life that they have left, I doubt that you're going to be hitting... Like, they're never going to survive that. You've probably hit them a few times in the game. In order to get your combo. Like, even if you just do this, like, for some reason. That, and then go into the Plus Ultra 3, then they're dead. It's just really strong, you want to make sure you save your meter so that you can go for that... I'm gonna call it an insta-kill. You just do attack into the, this, and then they're dead. Like, even if it's one attack, two attacks, a red attack... They're getting 24,000 damage, and it's ridiculous. And, anyways guys, I think that is all that I have to talk about with Shoot Style Deku. He is really fun. I, I have a lot of fun using him, especially since he's a bit more balanced than some of the other Dekus. He's really, I'd say probably the most broken thing about him is his block pressure. It's really amazing and really oppressive. His combos are okay, but what makes him really good is that you can do them off of any situation. He has good mix-ups, and he has good free damage. And yeah, he's just a really fun character, good all-rounder, and a good close-up character. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!